Mm -hmm. Musical productions do a great job of setting a tone that film alone would really struggle to take on. Music has a weird way of making us feel certain emotions based on the way that the harmony is structured. To keep myself honest, I chose not to rewatch The Greatest Showman and listen to specifically the song for 10 hours. And this is what I discovered. Hi! Thanks so much for letting me borrow your screen. I think this world kind of sucks, so let's build a new one. If you were to watch the full movie, there would be a lot more context to this song, but even in a vacuum, there's a lot you can tell purely from cunning writing, well-crafted lyrics, and proper execution. You can see two very similar men fighting about their differences, only to come to terms with the fact that they really have much more in common than they initially thought. This is the question that I feel like this song really did a good job of answering. Do riches and affluence prevent you from being blind to the outside world? In the first verse, we see Hugh Jackman's character, Burnham, coming to his compatriot with an offer. I can't be positive of what this offer is just from this verse alone, but we see him elaborating on the idea of breaking the mold. He actively mentions cutting him free from the drudgery of his modern life, declaring him the king of conventional as a way to seemingly explain that he's been stuck in the standardized march. In the following verse comes the first time he mentions this other side. Seemingly, he's trying to pull Zac Efron's character, Carlisle, into a business proposal that is much out of the ordinary. He says, creating the sentiment that he is stuck in a cage right now. Carlisle rebuts with a hard no, finally showing us that we're talking about a show that Burnham's crew is performing in. He says that he enjoys the life that Burnham says he's trapped in, obviously revoking the call to action here. He gives some sarcastic admiration with a witty remark of You're onto something, really it's something. in the sense that calling it really something is referring to it being odd and weird. He immediately offers that he enjoys this so-called cage, thus he doesn't need such a metaphorical key that he's being offered. He explicitly states that he's not interested in seeing the other side. Now immediately from just three verses of this song, we can really kind of begin to see who these characters are and what their motifs are. I mean, obviously if he's coming to him with a business proposal, we can assume that Burnham is a relatively versed businessman of some sort, but I could also assume that he's desperate in some way, right? But nonetheless, we can also see that Carlisle doesn't seem very intrigued by these new ideas. I could go as far to assume that he prefers whatever is standard, whatever is most common, you know, follow the grain type of person. Continuing on, we move back to Hugh Jackman's lines. He asks if Carlisle is really interested in wallowing in parties and plays, but Carlisle immediately retorts that joining such a show would leave him publicly disgraced and disowned. If I recall correctly, this is about joining a circus, so the line of him becoming another one of the clowns is pretty clever. Barnum vivifies a picture of freedom for us, saying that he would finally get a chance to live under his own means, live a little, laugh a little, and more specifically, begin to break down these walls that he's constructed. Now, I do want to mention that breaking down walls is a very common theme in this song. It pops up a lot, especially on Barnum's side of things, and... I think there's a couple ways that you could go about taking this, right? I mean, you could say walls in the sense of being blind to the outside world, but you could also say walls as in being defensive against, against your environment. So like, for instance, you know, we use walls commonly as a metaphor to say that you're walled off or to say that you are not accepting sensory information from your outside world. And that makes a lot of sense. And honestly, frankly, I think both are theoretically true about Carlisle, right? He's defensive but also, he's not interested in learning more. He's not interested in the outside world. He has these walls up, and Barnum is coming in trying to say, hey, tear those down. There's something really fascinating on the other side of those walls. Seemingly in a gesture of beginning to walk away, he finishes his line by saying that, Now that's a deal that seems worth taking. But I guess I'll leave that up to you. Curiosity seems to take him over, and he finally begins to bargain on numbers, asking what percentage of the show he would gain ownership of. They bargain and haggle for a bit, finally landing on 10%. This final chorus now includes both of them singing Burnham's original gesture. In one sequence in particular, Burnham says, You can do like you do, only for Carlisle to finish it with, Or you can do like me. 
Now, this is actually a really, really well-crafted line, in my opinion, as the fact that this was Barnum's line, right? Barnum repeated this several times. You can do like you do, or you can do like me. But in the instance of Carlisle taking off that latter half, where Carlisle says, or you can do like me, obviously is repeating the same line, but it has a whole new meaning right now. Because Carlisle is not doing what Burnham is doing, Carlisle is his own instance now, where he is not just seeing the other side, he's seeing it for the first time. You can do like me, now that I have discovered this. I am new to this other world, I am curious, I am intrigued, and I am willing to take this extra step. I don't know if that's reading too much into it, but honestly, I just think it's really cool. And the final line includes them both agreeing that they're going to this aforementioned other side. And this conversation, albeit sped up for the sake of cinema, is a symbolic analogy of what it means to be blindsided by your success, perhaps even mistaking your affluence for happiness. Before we get too far into the video, I want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe real quick if you're enjoying this type of content. I do make a lot of other videos like this, so you might as well go check them out. Yeah, check it, check it, check it. <laughs> subscribe! After listening to this song over and over again, these characters really began to develop better and better. Even with just this three to four minutes of time, you really tell who these characters are and what their motivations were. It's easy to tell that both of these men are successful in business practice given they spent the bridge of the song skillfully haggling with each other. What's even more interesting is that Carlyle seems to be more of a run-of-the-mill entrepreneur, finding success in basic business practices of some sort. I don't really remember the movie all that well, so I couldn't tell you exactly what they were, but I would assume it was something Wall Street coded. Burnham, on the other hand, seems to be on the leaning edge of success. I mean, he's coming to somebody so successful with an offer for a reason, perhaps he's desperate for a savior here. I would imagine that he is of the performing arts in-universe, giving him the edge on convincing somebody of a deal like this, regardless of how powerful they are. But his words are pretty heavy. He is offering to Carlisle that regardless of how much conventional success he's brought in over his lifetime, has he sat down to consider what actually makes him happy? Not what people innately consider a good time, but what genuinely makes him happy. It's easy to fall into this pit of pride where you believe that you're completely fulfilled just because you've gotten everything that everyone else has told you that you wanted. Carlisle seems to have found his personal identity in the whims of other people. It sounds like he throws parties, flaunts his wealth around others, and does all of the rich person things that rich people do. But what was brought to the table here opened his eyes to the fact that maybe there's more to life than what everybody told him there was. Maybe going outside of his comfort zone would actually be a bit exciting. This is especially powerful to me in the sense that you have somebody here who has succeeded on what is standard, on what is common. The run of the mill worked. And that's gonna be what makes it so scary to move away. If you are completely confident that there is success in standardization, moving away from it risks that. I mean, sure, you have the too big to fail clause that you might be able to hide under for a little bit, but realistically, it's intimidating to be someone who's made a fortune and so much success off of doing what everybody told you to do. Taking a moment to do something for yourself is gonna be terrifying. More than likely, this would be a small level of risk to him given his fortune, but this will likely serve as a gateway into genuine fulfillment and self-discovery. I would love to say that Burnham isn't in it for the money, but I would honestly struggle to admit that knowing that he's coming up with such a proper business proposal. Regardless, I digress. This single song did an amazing job of spelling out these two characters, obviously similar in several fiscal ways, but contrasting in their perspectives on life. Burnham approached Carlisle with an offer that was immediately refuted, but the moment real happiness was on the table, the rich man wouldn't let him leave just yet. This song, to me, is about someone who's drowning in wealth, finding joy in the smaller things in life. Things so small that he probably spent much of his titanic life stepping on them. I walked away from 10 hours of this song with one question. Do riches and affluence prevent you from being blind to the outside world? Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you being here through the whole thing. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to click on one of these beautiful little links uh, handcrafted just for you. It'll go to some of the other videos that I've done, other video essays, other content that I have broken down.
And while you do that, I'm going to go actually watch The Greatest Showman to see just how bad I messed this up. Thanks.